All right, so uh, here we go. The coke out of Kiev is returned. He's on, this is on Instagram, his official Instagram, saying meaningful negotiations on peace, on security for us, for Ukraine, are the only chance for Russia to reduce its damage from its own mistakes. It's time to meet, time to talk. It is time to restore territori territorial integrity and justice for Ukraine. Otherwise, Russia's losses will be so huge that several generations will not be enough to rebound. And here he is. In what, in my opinion, and you can uh, draw your own conclusions, is probably the worst example of a green screen I've ever seen. You got to see this. Just look at this. <laughs> Not a single thing moving in the back here. Hold on. Война пришла, але все одно ми точно всіх переможемо, тому що ми вільні народи, вільної країни. Протягом дня урядовці опрацювали рішення для повного like you've призвантаження. Joke and be mad. This it goes on for 10 minutes. We're not going to watch the whole thing, but uh, essentially you can't expect me to believe this. This is this isn't even a video in the background. This is a uh, a friggin' picture. A still picture. And he's he's expecting us to believe this. He's there calling for Russia to surrender while he's hiding out in some bunker with a green screen. And pretending that he's out in the streets of Kiev, which are completely empty, but it's not even—it's not even a video. There's like the whole time, it's the exact same still image. There's no sign of anybody, no sign of actual any any real video back there. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could do a better job on this re, uh, on this green screen. It looks ridiculous. Anyways, is there any, like, is there anything about this man that's real? Can we get one single thing about this guy that's actually real? I would love that. Um, here's a, something that I found when I was just doing some research. Uh, this is Radio Free Europe, which is basically a CIA front. Um, and this shows, it's about five minutes long. We're going to go through this today. And it shows Kolomoisky, which is, uh, he was the owner of Privat Bank. It's going to go through this now in a moment. But basically, he's a Ukrainian oligarch who funded um, Zelensky and all of his ende endeavors in step one. And... Um, this is an American source, and it's basically exposing everything about Zelensky uh, since his beginning, right? Um, so let's go through this here today. Ukrainian actor Volodymyr Zelensky has achieved fame portraying a president in this TV show, which is broadcast on a channel owned by a man backing his real-life presidential campaign. Billionaire Ihor Kolomoisky has provided security, lawyers and vehicles for Zelensky. His bodyguard accompanied Zelensky on the campaign trail. The car Zelensky uses belongs to a company owned by one of Kolomoisky's companies. <laughs> he can't even get his real car. He can't even get a car. He gets it from his, uh, his backer. This is just ridiculous. And Kolomoisky's lawyer is now working for Zelensky's campaign. When the results of the first round of the election became clear on March 31st, President Petro Poroshenko did not mince his words. Kolomoisky, filmed here in Switzerland in 2018, is an arch foe of Poroshenko and one of the richest men in Ukraine, with holdings in the metal, petroleum and media sectors. He set up Privatbank in the 1990s, which quickly grew to be one of the biggest financial institutions in Ukraine. But in 2016, Poroshenko's government seized control of Privatbank, claiming that billions of dollars were embezzled from it. My understanding is 5.5 billion dollars were smuggled from the Ukrainian people in which uh, a ton of it ended up in some offshore bank and uh, given to Zelensky. Um, I've heard as much as $1 billion. I, I don't know if it's that high. I've, I've heard a number around $41 million went to Zelensky on this, but uh, who, who really knows at the end of the day. Um, there is more on this in the Pandora Papers. Uh, Zelensky was specifically named. France 24, as you can see right here, France 24 did a, an article on this. We maybe can get into this another time, um, but you can look it up for yourself. The Pandora pa Papers, uh, Igor... Uh, uh, Kolomoisky and Zelensky. Uh, they are all involved uh, in with this. 
Kolomoisky denies any wrongdoing and is fighting in court to get Privat Bank back. RFERL recorded an off-camera interview with Zelensky about the issue. Kolomoisky has himself briefly held public office, becoming governor of his native Dnipropetrovsk region in 2014. It was shortly after mass protests toppled Ukraine's Kremlin-friendly president, Viktor Yanukovych. You mean your glowy revolution coup, your color revolution, right? By the same people who made this, by the way. <laughs> Radio Free Europe is obviously CIA. And uh, the CIA were behind uh, this uh, revolution that happened in 2014. It's called the Euro Maidan protests. Uh, but really, it was a color revolution complete with false flags and all that stuff, so. Ну, раз мы идем в Европу, мы хотим, чтобы все реформы, которые должны произойти в стране, они должны соответствовать, мы должны в результате этих реформ получить страну законодательной, административной базы, такая, как действует в европейских странах. Within months, Kolomoisky was helping to finance volunteer units to fight against Russia-backed separatists who had seized control in nearby regions one example of that is the Azov Battalion. Uh, there are many others. There's the Dnepro um, Battalions as well, and Adar Battalion. These were all uh, financed by Kolomoisky, who, funny enough, I mean, like, all of these are uh, basically fascist uh, groups uh, using Nazi symbolism, and uh, Kolomoisky himself is Jewish. Same thing with Zelensky. Funny how that works out. But I guess that's great to have, you know what I mean? Like you could have all these fascist groups and say, what are you talking about fascist? We have, uh, there's a Jew as a president, right? Things like that. ...of eastern Ukraine. Great front. He was credited with helping to prevent them from advancing into his region. But critics suggested he was also building a private army. On March 19th, 2015, Armed men occupied the offices of a state-owned oil company in Kiev. Kolomoisky was involved in a struggle for influence at the company called Ukr Transnafta. When he emerged from the building, an RFERL journalist asked what he was doing there. Why do you ask how the raiders of Ukr Transnafta happened? And the Russian diversants here came here. Why do you ask about that? Why did you see the Kolomoisky? Days later, President Poroshenko dismissed him as governor after Kolomoisky offered to step down. Kolomoisky continued his business activities, later moving to Switzerland. The old Jesuit stronghold of Switzerland. Interesting stuff, how he ended up there. And he's still here, there to that day, or to this day. Zelensky travelled to Geneva in February 2018 to is. attend Kolomoisky's birthday party. Oh. In April 2019, RFERL asked Kolomoisky about his ties with Zelensky. I might have met him. No, he just, he travels from Ukraine to Switzerland. Might have met him. <laughs> just just happened to be around his birthday. It's a complete coincidence. I, I don't recall. <laughs> okay. So, if I don't already do When I start asking questions as a investigator, I start to use it. But maybe I've been stuck and I don't know. But by checking flight records, RFERL discovered that after that birthday party, Zelensky flew to Geneva another 10 times. Furthermore, after Kolomoisky moved to Israel, Zelensky flew to Tel Aviv three times between October and December 2018. What a coincidence! <laughs> It's not clear if the two men met on these occasions. They both insist their relationship is professional and based on Zelensky's TV work. The aspiring politician says it's not political. Now ain't that something? Ain't that something? Is there anything about this man that is real and not propped up by these types of people? Unbelievable.
unbelievable stuff. So this is our boy Zelensky and his backer, Ior Kolomoisky. Um, if you guys want to do additional research, I would highly recommend looking up the Pandora Papers. I'm doing it myself, and uh, we'll report back the findings. And I'll place all the links of uh, what we had today uh, onto this. But uh, as you can see, our boy, there's not a single thing about this guy that, uh, that comes off as genuine. He is as astroturfed as they come, and uh, there's no... No doubt in my mind why they would uh, want to pass him off as some sort of hero. Anyways, guys, thank you very much. And uh, we're going to do a live stream tonight uh, in the next couple hours. I'll place the link down for that below as well. And I uh, hope to see you then. Have a great one. And until the next one, see you later.